Somebody's lying to you. We take out of our history books the contribution of revival to America. We redact from our history God's miracles, God's power, God's anointing. It's not in there. It's kept out. Even though it forged us. Even though if you look in the history of a place like Kentucky, when the Cane Ridge Revival came, the state of Kentucky was the most violent and outlaw nation, part of our nation. There was no law in Kentucky. Kentucky brought the place where every criminal that wanted to escape fled there. Now that's what they're trying to do with California. And what happened in Kentucky is the power of God fell in an astonishing alteration of what we know. It's not far from where I live now. The site of that revival that flipped that state to where they didn't want to commit adultery and bars shut down and morality and crime fell dramatically. You know these boys in Sacramento here, they don't want a cure, they want a job. They don't want to get rid of the gang violence. There's too much of a government budget for it. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to back down or apologize. There's nobody going to shut me up because it is the gospel of Christ that California needs to hear right now. That's evil. You know, let me warn you you're not a Christian because you go to church you don't become a Christian by going to church any more than you become a policeman by walking into a donut shop <laughs> and I respect the police and I pray for them The only thing worse than the blatant lies coming in the political system against the Christian faith is the watering down of it in modern preaching. What is one, one is a villain, the other is a traitor. Somebody said, well, people are offended by the gospel. That's because that lukewarm version you're giving them has no power. But let me tell you, give me a moment. Let me tell you. Give me a moment to explain. Let people lie to you about anything, but not the gospel. Don't let anyone lie to you. That teacher that told you Jesus was a hateful religion. He wanted power over you. She wanted power over you. Your friends that want you to stay on drugs and stay out of God. And they'll tell you, oh, look, if you start serving God, it's going to be a hard life for you. You're going to be criticized. But you'll have to look at this. What happens when Christ gets in you? That beautiful example of the man by the gate, beautiful. He got up and he walked. No longer had to beg. No longer had to fear. If he wanted a job, if he wanted to go somewhere, and for the first week, he just walked around scaring people. I didn't know you could walk you'll be able to do in your own version of it. You'll dream again. You'll be innocent again. The thoughts of the past won't harass you again. You'll be set free. You'll be a new person. You'll want to wake up in the morning and realize this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But there's another side, and I gotta close. I've gone too long, it's your fault because you're a long-winded audience, see?
There was a day when the hymns we wrote, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Why do all those hymns talk about that moment? Amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Modern preaching blurs the line, doesn't talk about hell, even though in your heart you know it's real because you're tasting a little bit of it every day. I want you to stop. I want you to look at me right now and act as though you're watching a video of yourself and the unfolding drama of how your life isn't working and hurts and you want to cure, you want to help. Here what I'm doing is grabbing the remote out of your hand and pressing the pause button. And I'm stopping the madness, the parade, the day-to-day -day grind long enough for you to see that Jesus is calling you to himself out of dead religion, out of guilt, and out of fear. Your obligation tonight is this. I do not want to go to hell, number one. I don't want the hell I'm in now. Number three, I need to find out why I was born. And I'm wasting precious time because it's only when I'm right with God that I will know why I was born. Don't waste another minute. Four, I have children who deserve a Christian parent. My daughter, my son ought to come home from school to a born again person. It's the greatest gift I can give them. Because if God can save me, he'll save my children. But if I'm deliberately lost, I'm giving them a degree of separation from hope myself. I am the author and finisher of their pain. In a moment, you're going to close your eyes. In a moment, I'm going to ask many of you in every part of this tent to put your hand in the air. And when your hand goes up, that's the beginning of your light. That's the beginning of the burden falling off of you. That's the beginning of the power of a habit over you. It's the end of its control. It's the end of it dictating how you live. You're no longer going to be the victim of some cruel joke, but the child of God walking according to a purpose.